You know, the Lord admonishes us with a very tall order. Found in Mark 16, 15, it clearly says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Our theme today is change the world, lest the world changes you. Let's get into this on this week's edition of Living Hope Today. It's great to have you tuned in today, and I don't take that for granted, considering all the things you may have to do today, but I thank you for being with us. We are excited that you are here. Well, today we are excited about this new season as we head into the fall. You know, October is actually, it's, it's actually my favorite month uh, of the year, and uh, here in Oklahoma, now the temperatures are just wonderful. I'm still wearing a short sleeve shirt yet here in the October or end of uh, September, but we're getting ready to go into October and it's, it's going to be really nice. And the weather is often nice after, uh, especially after a hot summer. And I hope that wherever you are, you're enjoying this fall season as well. And uh, I hope you'll be sure to uh, visit our Facebook and YouTube channels and be sure to hit the like share and then there's a, a follow button on YouTube they call it subscribe so we hope that you will hit the subscribe button and the bell there's a little bell there to get notifications when we're on but just in case you're don't don't want to do that or whatever and you're you're watching uh, uh, watching us on uh, Facebook you can watch us every Thursday. Every Thursday, we broadcast a brand new episode of Living Hope Today. So I hope that you'll uh, take note of that and be sure to tell others, let them know that we are on the air every Thursday. And I believe, <coughs> excuse me, I believe that when it co first comes on, it is sometime around 6 a.m. on the East Coast. And then you can figure it out from there, Central's 5, uh, 5 a.m. and so on across the country. So I hope that you'll you'll do that and uh, plan to watch us er each and every week for a brand new episode of Living Hope Today. Well, this week we are discussing on the theme, Change the World, Lest the World Changes You. You know, for many when you hear something like this, you think, well, I can't do that. It's just little old me, <laughs> like, you know, but, but when Jesus was on earth, he went about the father's business to reach people with the gospel. And after Jesus and the resurrection, uh, these handful of men, the disciples that he had went out, proclaimed the gospel and saw it spread throughout the world eventually starting with just these 12 men. These mighty men of God were the forebears of what we have today. So it is possible to reach people around, the, around us and uh, change the world for God. Have you done that? Well, today we're gonna delve into the subject and I pray that today's message will influence you to do your part in changing the world for Christ's sake. And I know the Lord will help each and every one of us as we get ready to do that, whether it's to our family, whether it's to our neighbors, whether it's to coworkers, we shall all be busy sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. But before we do, let's listen to a beautiful song sung by the Antoninian family, my family. I want you to listen as they sing and it, it uh, actually uh, is a beautiful song that I know will be a blessing to you. It simply says, let them know. I hope you enjoy that. We'll be right back right after their song. Oh 
enjoyed that song sung to us by the Antonian family. Let them know. And that, that song goes along with our theme today because what we're talking about is change the world unless this world changes you. And we need to be busy about the Father's business. And, you know, I was thinking when I was putting this uh, devotional together how many years ago we ministered quite often, probably with uh, with the great evangelist, pastor, and uh, missionary statesman, Dr. Oswald J. Smith. He was the pastor, the founder of the People's Church in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And uh, I admired this great man of God for his contribution to the ministry. He was, uh, we shared the stage with him many times, and I, in fact, he signed, he signed my Bible. Uh, he was... But he was a frail, he was tall, and as a young man, he was very frail as a young man, and, and, and the various mission societies, he felt a really calling to get into 
uh, the mission work in overseas. And uh, he checked with several mission agencies to work with. And the various mission agencies, agencies at that time uh, turned him down. They didn't think it was wise for him to minister in such harsh conditions overseas because of his frailty, and, and uh, they just didn't think it would work very good. So Dr. Oswald J. Smith didn't let that hold him back. Uh, he reached out to our first Native uh, Indigenous people of Canada. He ministered among them as a missionary for a while in, uh, I believe it was in uh, British Columbia. And then later, he came back to found the People's Church in Toronto. And his idea is, well, if you cannot go, if you cannot go to the field, send somebody who can. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. And uh, he began to support those who could go to the mission fields of the world. And he was, he was the first um, pastor that I know of to use the uh, faith pledge method of urging the congregation to, to give by stepping out in faith and trusting God to help them support world missions. And uh, I will never forget being on the platform there at the People's Church when our family was there singing, when they raised over $1 million for world missions. Each year afterward, that amount continued to exceed, and God wonderfully blessed that church. In fact, I, the last time I think I was there, they were over a million and a half. They were working, heading towards that two million mark. But that's how God blessed them. And they were able to send missionaries and help mission agencies across the world. Well, our topic today is the challenging subject of change the world, lest you be changed. You know, Jesus' disciples helped in spreading the gospel near and far just as Dr. Smith did and so many others. But today, we live in an increasingly different time. It's a difficult time. Our world is, is basically pulling the attention away from the command God gave us. If you look at this in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, read this along with me. It says, then Jesus, he admonished, the scripture admonished us that then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I surely am with you always, even to the very end of the age. You know, I can't help but look at the terrible situation our world is in. And we've talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You know, we can, see every, we can see it everywhere. Our nation is fighting with each other around the globe. There's lawlessness that abounds everywhere. Our children are being forced to um, change their uh, status, their biogenics, uh, uh, Schools are not letting the parents know that the, the kids want to do some of these things, and so much more. I think about how this must hurt, truly, the heart of God. And today, as followers of Christ, we are being bombarded, bombarded with evil from every side. But we are not alone in the mission to reach the world for Christ. The disciples, much in their day, and even uh, at that time, uh, were prosecuted for their faith. There was persecution, much of it. And there's a real di distinct possibility that if we don't get busy with the Lord, this sinful world could overcome us. You know, Satan doesn't want you to share Christ. He offers a lot of things to distract you and even deceive you. But with God's help, we can persevere and tell others about Christ. You know, just the mention of Jesus in our conversations and our deeds could make a world of difference around you. 
Remember, uh, my word, it says this, my word, I sent it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. And that's in Isaiah 55, 11. You know, our very countenance can, can bring opportunities to share the gospel. Don't let Satan deceive you that you can't. You know, we read in Romans 12, 1 and 2 this. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Yeah, we don't need to let Satan steal our joy. And don't allow the world to draw you in. This is why I mean this, the change the world lest it changes you. Instead, separate from the things that could cause us not to be as effective as God wants us to be. Mark 7, 8 says, even to put away the holding on of traditions. Don't let that become a distraction. I think about that with our native people. I think about the, the, the traditions and the culture that we have. If we raise our, if we serve the Lord and we raise our culture and our traditions above that of what Christ wants us to do and our love for him and our full attention, then that's wrong. It's vital that we not let those traditions and things like that get in our way. You know, I trust that today you will make the choice to follow God's commands and get busy for Christ before he comes. His return, I believe it's very, very soon. And what we do for Christ's sake must be done now. Will you get ready for the Lord by working to tell others about Christ, by sharing the gospel? Don't let this world take it from you. Don't let this world uh, distract you from what you need to be doing as a Christian. God wants us to share the gospel just as he shared it with his disciples and those 12 went forward and, and were the beginning of the gospel being spread around the globe as it is today. You can do it. You know, we look forward to being with you again next week. And I, I urge you to please take note of our connection page and drop us a line. We would, we would really love to hear from you. So I hope that you'll do that. Just let us know where you're writing, uh, writing from, where you're seeing our broadcast from. Or if you've made a commitment to trust the Lord as your personal Savior, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you're interested in going to the mission field and maybe you're working among our native people here in North America, you don't have to go overseas unless you really want to, unless the Lord calls you to do that. But you can serve right here or you can serve in your very own neighborhood and place and communities. So I hope that you will. And now... Until next week, may the Lord bless and keep you.